welcome back. I'm Di, and today I'm bringing you my March wrap-up. March was very busy for me. As you probably know, I was a co-host in the March Mystery Madness Readathon with Elizabeth and Troy. So we mainly focused on mystery reading in March. Also, you may be wondering why I am standing in front of a rack of clothes. It is because I became a LuLaRoe independent uh, fashion consultant in March. It's kind of a part-time job that um, I'm doing. And so uh, just getting that off the ground and launched was pretty busy for me as well. I launched at the end of March, so uh, just getting everything ready and um, up and my first shopping uh, videos and stuff for my group, it was pretty hectic. But that being said, um, I did manage to read 11 things in March, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I haven't read that much for three or four months, I think. Um, but I think having the little discussions and Monday meetups on Twitter really helped motivate me to read and make me want to read. And so I'll go through the novels that I read first, and then I'll go through the manga that I read at the end, as usual. So the first book that I read for March Mystery Madness was Behind Closed Doors. This is by B.A. Paris. I had gotten this one back in October, I think, for signing up for the publisher's newsletter. So I did get this book for free, not for um, an honest review, but because I signed up for their newsletter. I didn't get a chance to read it until March. So I kind of don't want to give you a synopsis for this book because it is a thriller, but I will read to you what it says right here on the front, and I think that should give you enough um, for you to decide whether or not you want to read it. So it says, the perfect marriage or the perfect lie? I really think that's all you need to know going into this. Um, for me, the story was pretty predictable a lot of the time. Grace, I think her name is? Yes. Grace is the wife, and she has a younger sister that is a part of this story. Her name is Millie, and she also has Down Syndrome. I can't tell you if the representation for someone with Down Syndrome is done well, but I can tell you that I thought Millie was exceptionally brilliant, um, especially more brilliant than her sister Grace. There were times where I was wondering to myself why Grace herself never thought of certain things Millie thought of, and I thought that Grace was exceptionally naive um, a lot of the time in this story. I thought it was nice to see that Millie kind of one-upped her sister several times in this story. The ending, I kind of predicted, but not in the way that it happened. Um, but it was a good ending. The story wrapped up very nicely. And I'm not sure how many stars I gave this. I need to check my Goodreads. One second. Okay, I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. So that was behind closed doors. I think I was supposed to put this in for the March Mystery Madness um, challenge as author that was new to you, but I ended up logging it in as my um, thriller selection. So that could double for either one of those. I can tell you right now that I did not uh, complete all of the challenges, but that's that's not like a priority for me when I go into readathons. So 
Anyway, that was behind closed doors, three and a half stars. The not part of March Mystery Madness, I read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I read this because in April I am buddy reading uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is the first book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm buddy reading that with my friend Lee from Totally.net. You know I've buddy read with her in the past. Anyway, she had read The Hobbit last year and I was going to skip this one going into our buddy read, but a lot of people in our Ravelry group, which is the uh, Crochet and um, Lee's group, she kind of has her own group for her portrait panels, had recommended reading this because it gives a lot of more of the world and stuff like that. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to, um, that I was probably going to skip this was because I have already seen the movies. I really, really enjoy the Lord of the Rings movies and I've seen all three of the Hobbit movies and I really enjoyed those as well. And so I kind of felt like I knew things going into it that I wouldn't need to read this. But I'm glad that I did end up picking this one up. This one obviously follows Bilbo on his adventure um, when he finds the ring and his adventure with this group of dwarves and the dragon. Um, so, it was interesting. I did know a lot of things that was um, going to happen because I have already seen the movie. To my surprise, <laughs> I uh, did listen to some of this on audio um, through Kindle Unlimited. And there was a lot of singing that I wasn't prepared for. I could have done without that. But, um, I'm glad I read this. I ended up giving it three stars. I can tell you that I probably will not ever read it again. But I'm glad that I did get through it once in my lifetime. Um, so, yeah, three stars and I'll probably stick to the movies. Then back to March Mystery Madness. I read Pretty Poison. This is by Joyce and Jim Levine. This was one of Book One Cozy's Club's picks that I just wasn't able to finish during the month that we selected it. Uh, truthfully, this one took me a while to get through. This one follows Peggy Lee and she is a widowed, um, I wouldn't say elderly, but I think in her senior, early senior years, she has a hobby of, uh, trying to crossbreed new plants. She also has her own florist shop and she teaches a class at the local university and she uh, stumbles upon the body of one of the citizens in their town lying face down dead in her florist shop one morning so she decides to kind of take it upon herself to investigate, especially because one of the homeless men that um, she knows really well is being accused of the crime and she knows that he couldn't possibly have done it. Um, her son is a police officer. Her uh, husband was also a police officer killed in the line of duty. And so I kind of really like the banter going back and forth between Peggy who is trying to do some amateur sleuthing and her son who is like no mom just leave it to the authorities for a little bit her son kinda got on my nerves cause he was a little too much you know stop investigating not in a nice way uh, but after a while you could see how much he really cared about his mom and why he uh, really wanted her to just leave it up to the professionals. And uh, so this one um, included little little bits of information on different types of flowers at the beginning of each chapter, which I really enjoyed. I have a black thumb. I kill any plant that I go near. I can't keep any plants alive. 
and uh, so I don't know how much the uh, gardening tips in this book will help me but it did make me interested in trying those out especially um, planting bulbs and things like that but I had no idea who the culprit was going to be in this one. Anyway, I did enjoy this one. I gave it four stars and I will be going on to the next one in this series when I am able to find it. And I ended up logging this one in as my cozy mystery selection for the March Mystery Madness Challenge. Then I read Bubbles Unbound. This is by Sarah Strohmeyer. This is the first book in the Bubbles Yablonski mystery series. This was also a Book One Cozy's Club pick. This one follows Bubbles Yablonski, who is a hairdresser, and she's also a single mom. And uh, she's kind of trying to find a career other than hairdressing um, after her divorce. So she's been going to community college and she's pretty much taken every class that they offer and cannot find anything that she's good at. So she's on her last set of classes at the community college and they basically tell her if this doesn't work out for you then I'm sorry you have no other options. And this class is a reporting class and um so she's kind of trying to become a reporter and her teacher also um, works at a newspaper and so one day he calls her and says hey all of my reporters are out doing other stories and I really need you to cover this for me do you think you're ready and she jumps on it so she goes and does the story and coming home uh, from grabbing the story sh she stumbles upon a dead body and not far away from the body is a prominent person in their town and so she runs with this that story instead um, with the prominent uh, person possibly killing this person that they stumbled upon and it gets her into all kinds of trouble. In this one, there are tips for um, beauty treatments such as masks or uh, foot soaks or how to do a pedicure. There's even a makeup tutorial. That being said, some of it is really, really dated. I think you need to be over 40. Um, in order to get some of the things that go on in here. There is reference to some 80's hair bands I think and even I got lost when those um, bands were mentioned. I have no idea who they are um, but the makeup tutorial also was very dated. You're not gonna get any highlighting or contouring in that one. But it was kind of funny to read through it and see what they recommended as far as how to put on your makeup. There was a really cool uh, Kool-Aid hair dyeing tutorial in here that I think my daughter might want to try out but we haven't actually done it yet. But yeah, this book was entertaining. Bubbles is a very entertaining character. I did kind of know who the culprit was about halfway through the story, I think. I think the thing that bothered me the most about this story was not that it was dated in some areas, but Bubbles kind of falls for this guy in this book as main characters do in Cozies and thankfully no love triangle, however... I don't understand her infatuation with him. He's hardly in the story at all and to hear her be like, oh swoon, this guy, oh swoon, this guy, I just, I don't understand it. <laughs> and so that's probably the thing that 
got under my skin the most about this story. That being said, I will continue to the next one. I ended up giving this one three stars. And I've read other book, other books. I've read one other Sarah Strohmeyer book, not a cozy mystery series, but um, a standalone. I think, I can't remember which one it was at this point. It was either The Sleeping Beauty Proposal or The Cinderella Pact or something like that. It's one of those two. One of them I've read, one of them I haven't, and I still have on my shelf. Um... But I did like Sarah Strohmeyer's writing style, which is why I had put this series on my to-read list long, long ago. And so, yeah, I will be um, reading on to the next one, Three Stars. And I ended up logging this one in for uh, the first in a series or sequel um, to a series challenge for the March Mystery Madness challenges. The next book I read was also not for March Mystery Madness, but it was The Bone Witch by Rin Chupiko, and this came out on March 7th, I believe. I did uh, receive an ARC from the publisher and NetGalley. It was my first ARC through NetGalley, so thank you to NetGalley and Sourcebooks Fire for allowing me the opportunity to review this. This... Um, story follows Taya, and she is a bone witch, um, or an Asha, and uh, her specialty is to uh, bring back people from the dead. The term you're probably more familiar with is necromancer. And um, in this world, children at the age of 13 go through this ceremony that's um, called the Hearts Class Ceremony. And people wear like glass hearts on um, a, as a pendant, and the heart is uh, filled with a smoke of a different color. So normal people have either red or pink smoke, and then um, witches, depending on what type of witch you are, have different color smoke. And um, you're not supposed to get your powers if you have any until this ceremony. And Taya's other sisters are all witches of different types, so it's presumed that she's going to have some kind of ability, but in this world there are these creatures called Deva, and from the description it kind of sounds like a more gruesome type of sphinx, so they're creatures that have the heads of this and the body of that, and but they're like gruesome creatures. And Taya's older brother, Fox, um, is recruited to serve and um, he gets killed on one of the missions to, to defeat a Deva. And so his body is brought back to um, their town and as they're doing the um, burial ceremony, that's when Taya's powers activate and it's enough of a phenomenon that a really well-known bone witch comes to her town to collect her, um, collect Taya, and she takes Taya with her to teach her how to be a bone witch. In this world, there aren't very many bone witches. They're very rare and what they do is very important as they are the ones that are really the ones that get rid of the Deva. The story really follows Taya as she learns how to become a bone witch and hone her abilities and all of the training that she goes through. This was a very slow story. Um, it was enjoyable. I enjoyed reading it. Um, as soon as I read the first chapter, I had questions um, in my head about how Taya um, got to the situation that she is in. Um, the story does go back and forth between past and present, so we see Taya as she is today. 
and we see Taya as she's growing up learning how to become this bone witch. Several of the things in the story do remind me of perhaps what a geisha's training would include, but I, I don't think this story is very Japanese in nature, which is part of the reason why I am kind of confused about the story. Lots of the terms weren't explained. I'm still not sure what culture these words come from. I perceive them as Chinese, but I think the author is Filipino. So there's a little bit of disconnect in my head as I read these things. Also, it wasn't until 60 something percent into the book that we're told that Taya's name is pronounced Taya. So for 63 percent of the book, I was pronouncing her name in my head as T because that's how it's spelled, T-E-A. We're not told it's Taya until 63% into the book. And so that was also kind of disjointing to me. I had a hard time with that, especially because every time I would read her name after that, I would have to stop, go back and reread it and say, no, it's Taya, not T. And so that kind of slowed down my progress to the book. I think another problem I had with this is that, yeah, okay, there were some exciting times in the story, but there were far and few between. And so there was nothing really keeping me wanting to come back to the story. Yeah, it was a nice story to read. I did enjoy it while I was reading it. But there was nothing saying hey, you need to go back to that book and find out what's going on. Um, so that also made it a slower read um, for me. I thought for sure I'd have this book read um, by the time it came out, but it just didn't happen. And so I did end up giving it three stars. I will be continuing it on to the second one in the series when it does come out because at the very end of this book things really started to pick up and I am very curious to see what happens. Not only that, I think because all of this backstory has been done and explained and now that you've got this foundation, the story should progress very nicely and at a faster pace um, on the next installment. So yeah, I ended up giving this one three stars. And the final novel I read in March was Blueberry Muffin Murder by Joanne Fluke. This is the third book in the Hannah Swenson series. I last read book two, which was Strawberry Shortcake Murder, I think, a couple years ago. And so it's been a while since I visited these characters, but the reason I picked this one up is because I needed another audiobook to listen to. I like to listen to audiobooks in the morning while I'm getting ready for work. And so this one was available on uh, One Click Digital, which is offered by my library, and so I decided to go ahead and borrow it. This one follows Hannah as she investigates the death of a popular TV chef, I guess you call her. This TV personality was found dead in Hannah's cookie shop and so Hannah is personally invested in this investigation because her shop has been closed down as it is the scene of a crime. Now, Hannah is in charge of baking a bunch of cakes and cookies for this winter festival that her town is having and not being able to have access to her ovens or, or her shop or anything like that is really debilitating to uh, what she needs to get done. So, of course, as she always does. She goes ahead and gets herself into the investigation. I enjoyed this one. Again, this one did have a love triangle. 
still kind of irritated with love triangles. I kind of feel Hannah likes one better than the other. In this book particularly, it was pretty obvious to me that she felt more towards one um, than the other, like true feelings, not just like is attracted to. But just her going back and forth between two guys is not interesting to me. I want her to pick one and be done with it, but I hear that's not going to happen for a while, so that's kind of putting me off this series. I do enjoy reading all of the recipes. I have yet to try making one of them myself, um, but the story I thought was interesting enough. I kind of put together who the culprit was towards the end, but I still found the story enjoyable. I ended up giving this one three stars. I will probably go on to the next one because I have collected almost all of them, um, and I do enjoy uh, seeing all the recipes and hearing her talk about each um, type of cookie or in this one especially blueberry muffins. So yeah three stars. Okay, so that's all of the novels I read during the month of March. Now on to the manga. I don't have these to show you because I had to return them to the library, but I will put a little picture here. So the first two volumes I read were Welcome to the Ballroom, uh, volumes one and two by Tomo Takeuchi. This one follows a high school student named Tatara Fujita and he is just not good at anything. He is on his way home and he gets bullied by this group of other high school kids and someone comes up to save him and it turns out that this guy is like the owner of this struggling dance studio and so he invites Tatara to come and uh, dance, take dance lessons. And at first Tatara's like, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, but while he is at the studio, one of the girls from his school that he is attracted to shows up and it turns out she is a competitive ballroom dancer and is pretty darn good at it. So he kind of becomes interested in taking the lessons and uh, turns out he kind of has a knack for it himself. So I really enjoyed these two volumes, um, but I do think that it would be more enjoyable as an anime. And I believe it is coming out as an anime. I think that's what my daughter told me. So I am really curious to see what I think of the episodes um, that cover these two volumes that I read are like. Because of all of the dance movements, sometimes it was hard to figure out what he was doing just by trying to read the, um, the movements and the way that he, the dancers were being drawn. But nonetheless, I did enjoy the storyline a lot and seeing Tatara kind of grow into becoming a dancer. And so yeah, I ended up giving uh, both of these volumes four stars and I will be continuing on with the series and of course we'll be watching the anime when it is released. The second manga I read was volume 13 of Bride of the Water God. You know that I have been reading this one for a while. It is a manhwa, so a Korean comic, and it follows Soa as uh, she gets sacrificed to the Water God by her uh, town as they have not had rain and so they think that by sacrificing Soa they'll be able to get some rain. Soa instead of dying she becomes a welcome member in the realm of the water god and so the story kind of follows her trials and tribulations being a human in a world full of gods and uh, her relationship with Hebek the water god 
and um, things kind of took a turn in this volume as of right now where when I'm filming this I have already read volumes 14 and 15 and so I'm probably just gonna tell you the same thing because these three volumes stories story is still connected in these volumes um, but I am still enjoying it a lot the artwork again is still beautiful and I hear there's going to be a Korean drama adaptation coming out soon so I'm really excited for that I've already seen some of the um, announcements as to casting and I'm not familiar with very many of the people that have been cast but I am nonetheless looking forward to seeing the Korean drama. It has been a while since I have immersed myself in one. Um, but yeah, still enjoying this series a lot and I ended up giving volumes 13, 14, and 15. I might as well tell you um, all four stars as I've done with all of the other volumes in this series. Then I read volumes 3 and 4 of Black Butler by Yana Toboso. This um, follows Sebastian, who's the Black Butler, and he's in charge of keeping the young Earl Phantom Hive, uh, or CL, safe um, from people who kind of are after him. As I told you before, CL is an orphan, and he has inherited this large estate. Not only that, but the corporation uh, his family is in charge of and side note he also does little jobs for the Queen so he's kind of James Bondy kind of not. In these two volumes we're into a different storyline from the prior two volumes. I did enjoy these two volumes not as much as the prior two volumes but it's still enjoyable for me and like I said I have already watched the anime so I did already know what was going to happen. I did fly through these two volumes. I ended up giving both of these volumes three stars and will probably be continuing on since my daughter has already reserved the next two volumes. Since we'll have it in my house, I might as well read them, right? So that's everything that I ended up reading in March. Um, let me know if you've read any of these or if you participated in March Mystery Madness. I really enjoyed doing the uh, Monday meetups on Twitter and I think we're going to try to make that a continuous thing like maybe every first um, Monday of the month or the last Monday of the month. Um, but let me know if uh, you might be interested in chatting with us about the mysteries that you read. I will link our uh, Twitter page down in the description box below as well as our Goodreads group. We do host the uh, Book One Cozy's Club discussion threads in the March in the Mystery Madness Goodreads group um, when it's not March so please come by and uh, join us in those reads. I'll also uh, link my shopping group below in case you're interested in checking out what LuLaRoe has to offer and what I am currently carrying in my inventory. And so, yeah, that does it for me this month. I hope you're all doing great. And until next time, take care and smiley always. Bye.